Coaches, you researched the job, you did the interview, and then you got the phone call. You are now the next head coach. Now what? Stay tuned. Fight 72. Fight 72. All right, coaches, welcome back to the 92 Mesh Group channel. This is Coach Coltharp coming to you from your home on YouTube for the Air Raid offense. And today we're going to do part two of So You Want to Be a Head Coach. And we're going to talk about what you need to be thinking about in the first 30 days of being the head football coach. Uh, now, you know, like I said, if you like these kind of videos and you want to hear more about that, you know, hit subscribe and, and make sure you hit that bell so you know when we go live, we're going to try to go live three or four times a week plus the podcast um, as we get into the off season. And, and, you know, today we're kind of getting ready for air raid intensive and and doing some other things like that. But uh, we really appreciate you guys stopping by and watching our videos, and hopefully they give you something um, to think about and help you in, 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 in your career as a, as a football coach. So here we go. We're talking about becoming a head football coach. And, and, you know, in the last video, we talked about how you research the job and looking at the interviews and things of that nature and, and you know, the things that you needed to do as you go in, things you needed to talk about and things like that. And so now you get the job. You're the head football coach. What are you going to do? Well, the first thing you got to do is you got to meet your team. And, and so, you know, I there's a lot of... Um, you know, ideas about how you do that. You go in there and you, you put the hammer down and all these other kind of things like that. But, you know, I always say this, remember to be you. You never get a, You never get another chance to make a first impression. And I will tell you, today's kids can spot a fake from a mile away. So don't go in there and, and try to be something you're not. Just be the guy that the, that the administration hired. Be the guy who you are and go in there and, and start building your relationships. Set your foundation. When you go in there, what are your core values? And if you don't know, you know, don't have an idea of what those core values are, I tell you what, go back to our very first podcast where me and Coach Salas talked about culture and he talked about the core values that he that he put in place when he tried to turn Hopton around. And if you get a chance to come to Air Raid Intensive this weekend, he's gonna talk about that. I mean, it's a great, great clinic talk. So, but you know, talk about your core values, what are important, you know. You know, the whole the whole four F things, you know, faith, you know, family, finances, football, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of universal in some in some kind of aspects. But what are your core values? You know, and this is your first pitch to your team. This is your first opportunity to get them on your side and make them understand what you're going to be about. And, and so you also want to build some excitement in this meeting. You have to understand this is your first pregame speech. This is your first get right. This is your first, hey, let's all get on the same page. Let's buy in. We're all here for the same type of thing. So this is your first chance to do that in that first team meeting. So then what I like to think about is individual meetings. You know, I want to meet with the assistant coaches. You know, who wants to stay? Who wants to go? Um, are you coaching a position that you feel comfortable in? If you could change something else or move to another position, what would that be? And you're really going to get an idea of what these guys are, especially especially if you're in a situation where you get a job and you're not allowed to bring guys in. Um, you know, and there are some pe some situations like that, especially in the union states where you know it's hard to to get, to get teachers in the building and things of that nature. But you know, every time I go, one of the questions I always ask the principal and the athletic director is, is how many guys can I bring in? You know, it's always cool if you can bring guys in um, who who feel the same thing about you and are on the same page with you that you're familiar with, but sometimes you're not. And so you have to go in and you have to build that relationship. And just remember this, you know, loyalty is it can't be demanded. It has to be earned. And so you have to go in and you have to build a relationship. You have to make guys feel valued and not even feel valued. They have to be valued. Because these guys are going to be the guys that make you successful. So you want to you want to ask them, you know, hey, what do you feel comfortable in? Um, who are they? Do they fit in, into your in your mantra? Do they understand the uh, their work ethic? That's going to have to go in. Do they understand the time requirements? And and Coach Dular talked a little bit about this in one of the podcasts last week. And uh, you know, do they understand you know where where they fit in in the program? What what are their goals? And I always like to hire guys who want to be head coaches. Um, I've had the opportunity to have eight or nine assistants. I, I lost count. Um, eight or nine of my former assistants have been head coaches or are head coaches right now. And, and I like that because those guys are guys who are going to grind. They want to be better. They're not they're not just kind of settled in their ways. And, 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 you know, it's always nice to have a good mix. You want to have guys who will just say, hey, coach, man, look, I don't want to be a head coach. I just want to go out there. I want to coach this position. I want to work hard. And that's fine, too. But you really want if you're going to have a younger staff, you want to you want a group of guys who really are after it and want to learn. And so that's 
that's that's one of those things. So, you know, hey, ask them what they think about the program. What did they like? What don't they like? Uh, hey, what's wrong with the program? Why haven't we been successful? Because more often than not, when you take a job, there's a reason why you're the new head football coach. Very rarely do you get to be one of those guys who takes over, you know, a program that's already set and been successful unless you're just a a long time assistant, um, you know, in a a very successful program. So if you're going to a program, you know, that that hasn't been very good, you got to find out what's wrong, what's right. You know, I've I've made a living going to going to schools that haven't been very good and and trying to make them good. You know, I I took one program that was 0 and 21. Ended up in the playoffs three years later. You know, I had another program that had, you know, was like one in something, whatever. And, you know, we went to the playoffs for the second time in school history with that place. And then one before I got to Red Springs, probably my best job, you know, they had won something like four games in, in the previous three years or so, or nine games in the previous three years combined. And then, you know, we went 22 and six. And, and, and so, you know, you really got to understand, you know, what's wrong with the program, what's right with the program, what can you do to put in place? And meeting with those assistant coaches is really important when you do that. Another thing that I like to do, is I want to talk to the revern- the returning varsity players and I want to talk to them individually. Hey, who are you? What do you do? What are your goals? Um, you know, what are your these are our core values. Do you think these are important? You know, find time to meet with these guys five or five minutes at a time. You know, it doesn't have to be a, a formal sit down. It could be in the hallways if if you got a bunch of guys coming by. But you want to try to meet with those key guys in particular um, and, and let them know that you're here for them. You know, do they want to go to school? What do they want to do when they grow up type thing so that you can kind of get an idea where to go in your recruiting process for this kid. If this kid is, is some kid that you think has a chance at the next level. Um, the other thing that I always want to do is I want to meet with the baseball and basketball coaches. I, I can't express enough how important it is to have those guys on your side. Now, at a lot of small schools, you're fortunate. The baseball, basketball coaches sometimes are, are, are assistants for you. So you kind of get an idea and it's really easy when that happens. But sometimes they're not. And so, you know, I always met with the basketball coach first because we said we tended to um, – clash the most because of summer league basketball, you know, interfering with summer workouts and things like that. Baseball guys normally go in the evenings and I don't practice in the evenings in the summer because of thunderstorms and all this other nonsense. We we go out there in the morning and get it done and then go play baseball at night. Um, but the basketball guys, you know, you, you kind of find out, hey, you know, when are y'all doing summer league? You know, up here in North Carolina, they do summer league as soon as school gets out for like two weeks. You know, they have team tournaments and things like that that they go to. And then most basketball coaches will shut it down the end of June. So are, are you going to try to get something done when the majority of your kids aren't going to be there if you if you have multi-sport guys or not and so meet with that basketball coach your baseball coach what is your off-season schedule um how do they feel about multi-sport athletes and, and if they're a little a little hesitant about that explain to them hey look i'm an air raid coach coach i'm not going to take your your small forward and put his hand on the ground and make him down block on, on five techniques you know i'm gonna I'm split him out seven yards from the ball let him run corner routes and he's not going to take big knocks and i'm gonna take care of your players and if you don't believe me here's my here's my track back Background of boom, 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 boom. This is how guys have been able to do it. And look, I've made a living over the years of having basketball guys come in um, and, and do well. You know, when I was at Westover, we had a couple of kids. Uh, Felipe Harris was one of them. He ended up being a college point guard. He ended up playing tailback for us. And, um, you know, we, we've just had guys after guys after guys who were basketball guys who came in and ended up being good football players for us. You know, Kenrante Walker, who's coaching in Charlotte, was another guy who was a AAU basketball kid that came to our school, you know, ended up going to, uh, to Missouri and, and playing safety out there. And, and, and you know, those are guys who played basketball. Anthony Amos was another kid, ended up, he was a basketball kid. And I can remember talking to him as a sophomore. You know, Anthony, you know, what's the deal? Oh, you know, my dad thinks I'm a point guard and all sort of stuff. Anthony ended up being a big time receiver at Middle Tennessee. He stayed and, and, and got into camp with the Dallas Cowboys. So you got to get these guys out and you got to let them know, hey, look, we're going to do these things to make you successful. And that's one of the things the air raid does for you. If you're an air raid guy, you understand you can get those kind of kids to come play, whereas they, they may not. Um, you know, also want to talk to the baseball and basketball coaches. You know, what's the culture of the school? How do people feel about sports? What do you do to be successful? Uh, how do you get the teachers on your side? These are all great things that you probably don't think about a whole lot, but these are things that you need to talk about in the first 30 days. Um, some other things I like to talk to the outgoing captains you know hey them, them four or five guys who were seniors or studs who are graduating 
Find a time, man, you know, take them, take them over to the little pizza joint in town, buy them a slice or something and sit down and talk to these boys and find out, hey, what was their experience in the program? What did they like and they didn't like? You know, one of the things that I when I took over Red Springs, my seniors had had three different coaches. I was their third coach. And so it was they were very hesitant to 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 say, yo, coach, this is good. This is good because they just didn't know. They're like, oh, here comes another dude. And, and, and so, you know, what is what is their experience in the program? What did they like? Um, what were their favorite traditions? You know, because you might want to try to put your stamp on things, but if they have a certain walkout song that they like or they do a certain, you know, uh, you know, beat in pregame warm ups or whatever, whatever they do that that every school kind of has and has had over the years and years and years. Um, do they like that? I mean, if you ever go to Gray's Creek, you'll never be able to change, you know, the the rooster song that they sing at the end of the game. I mean, it's it's ingrained in the school. And so if you go in there and try to change that, people are going to look at you like you're crazy. So, you know, every school has a tradition that you have to stay with. And so talk to those guys about it. And then the most important thing, I, and I think this is where a lot of guys make mistakes. Make these guys know that they're always welcome. The weight room, if you're going to college to play ball and you want to lift in the summertime, you ain't got to pay to go to the gym. Come up here and lift with us. OK, so our guys can see that this is what happens. You get a chance to go play at the next level. Come back. And when they come back, make sure they wear their stuff. You know, hey, I went to Appalachian. I come in the weight room at my high school with my Appalachian gear on and Appalachian football, whatever. You know, do these things so that these guys know that this is a family. This is a program. It's not a team and that we want you here. Things may not have been successful. They may have been uber successful. But we're just going to build on what you've started. And, and all of our successes have become because of the things that you've put in. I one of the guys around here that I played college ball with, uh, Jake Thomas, works at a school here local to me. And one of the things that he does is he invites former players, anybody. I mean, we're talking about 40, 50 year old cats. Anybody that played at his school, like at homecoming, they get to run out of the tunnel with with the team. You know, and, and so these guys love it. You know, they're, there's old fellas and, and they're reliving their childhood. But he he went in and said, hey, listen, this is your team. I'm just I'm just in charge of it. But this is your team. This is the program you built. And that's an ingenious way of getting guys to buy in. So make sure they know that they're always welcome. Um, faculty meeting. I cannot express how important it is that you try to be able to speak to the faculty as soon as possible. OK, the first chance you get, if you if you give away opportunities to talk to the faculty, you're setting yourself up for failure. You have to let them know that you that you sponsor a culture of support. Hey, listen, if you're having a problem with one of my guys in class, hey, just let me know because he'll have a problem with me because, you know, we want them to handle inside the building the way we expect them to act outside the building. You know, don't embarrass the program. And, and I hold I hold guys accountable. If I have two teammates in, in, in class, if one of them's acting them up, I, I get on the both of them. You know, hey, why didn't you check him and say, hey, look, man, we got things to do. If this isn't going to help us get to where we need to go because we're in here acting foolish. So they need to know it's a it's a uh, it's a culture of support and that you're there to help them with the players, you know, both academically and, you know, disciplinary wise. You know, one of the things that we used to do, if we had a kid that was struggling in math class. We put them out of weight training. Hey, look, man, you, you got to go back over to math and see Miss So-and-so and get a little extra work until you get that grade up. And, and, and generally what happens is, yo, coach, for real? For, yeah, man, you can't lift today. I need you to go back over to math and get this tutoring and so we can get this squared away. And, and then the teachers really appreciate that because they see it's not just about football. But look, this can't be like a car salesman thing either. You can't do that just because you're trying to get them on your good side. You really have to understand that you're developing the total child here. It's not just about football players. It's about developing young people. Uh, Coach Salas talked about how he grew up in a senior, a single parent home, and he learned how to be a man from his football coaches. And, and so that's a tremendous uh, uh, responsibility that a lot of us have. And so we have to support them in, in all realms, just not athlete, athletically. And that, that goes to our last point, which is the importance of being a student athlete. And that's what you have to talk to the faculty about and say, hey, listen, let me help you. And um, and then you'll be surprised is what happens. You know, the other things that you can do, a lot of guys do different things. You know, they talk about doing, um, you know, letting people wear their jersey, you know, letting kids give teachers jerseys on Fridays and things like that. Anything you can do to get those teachers on your side is a big thing. The next thing you want to do is you want to meet with your stakeholders. You know, and a lot of people call them booster clubs. One of the things I like to do is like a spaghetti dinner. It's real cheap. Um, it's very similar to your first team meeting, though. You know, you got to get with these people. You want to mingle with these people and give them honest attention. Don't give them FaceTime because they're going to come and tell you. You know, I had a principal one time that told me, he said, when you get a job, 
you know, the, the principal, when he gets his job, the first five people that come to see you are the, are the people that you can't trust. And, and, and there's some truth to that because those are usually the people that have an agenda. But you need to listen to that agenda and find out what it is. You know, are they are they trying to get influence? Do they have a son that they want to play? Um, you know, do they come up to you and all they do is bad mouth the old coach? Because if they're bad mouthing the old coach, guess what? They're going to bad mouth you too. So you just be honest with them and say, hey, listen, I'm here for the kids. I, I, I would love to have your help in doing that. Um uh, uh, and these are the things that we're going to do to give back. You know, we're going to have community service projects in, in our program. We're going to we're going to go to the elementary school and read. We're going to do the special the special Olympics, local special Olympics things. Um, we're going to do the, the 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 fitness day at the elementary school. We're going to take the team over there and they're going to run the drills for the teachers during the you know the physical physical fitness day or field day for the teams. These are kind of things, and these are the things that you talk about what you're going to do with the program to give back. Don't get in there and start talking about what you need because then they're, they're going to want to know, well, okay, what do I get for it? So we're going to tell them what we're going to do first. And you'll be surprised um, that when you highlight service and not highlight needs and wants, it's going to be a lot easier for you to get things from people that who are going to help. The next thing you want to do is talk about recruiting, being able to be recruited. Um, you know, hey, this is our goal. Our goal is, look, I don't give scholarships. If I did, I'd give your kid a scholarship just because I love him and he's been a good guy. But you need to understand our, our responsibility is to make sure that every kid is able to be recruited. You know, all you can do is call them. All you can do is call coaches, send film, work with teachers and make sure academics are in order. Express to the kids how important it is for them to do their schoolwork. And I tell kids all the time, you know, it's called college football. Football, what's the adjective? And then, well, you'll coach college is the adjective. It's really not. Football is really the adjective on that because you're going to football to be able to go to college. OK, and if you're not interested in going to college, it's not going to do you any good to go play football. And, and, and that's what I tell these kids all the time. You don't want to go away just to have to come back with your tail between your legs. So you got to be able to go up there and do the things you want to. And you can help your kids do that by having a culture of uh, of academic success. You know, we don't want to be average at anything that we do. Um you know, what's the process in recruiting? Explain to these people about the one day clinics. A lot of these guys don't understand. They think their kids need to go to these three and four day week clinics at these colleges. I mean, that's not what that's not how to get recruited. You know, give these kids the 30 bucks and take them up there to these one days. Let them run. Let them work out with the position coach and, and, and find out what they like. And, and you know, the, the three days are, are, are for the younger kids. And, and that's how you're making G.A.'s money and things like that. And look, I ain't mad at nobody's hustle, but we all know the one day is where you go get your offer. And, and so explain to the stakeholders that, hey, if you want to help us do this, we got kids, certain kids that don't have the money to do this. You want to help us raise money. Or if you, you know, I had a local car dealership one time in, in the town I worked in. They used to give us uh, an SUV for the, you know, for the day that we'd go over and pick it up and, and take the kids in, up, to, up to the schools and let them do those kind of things. So that's pretty nice. Another thing I, I like to do is we do, and I got some of the stuff from, from, uh, from Joe Salas. Uh, he, he does a Tuesday night cookies and milk thing. Um, what we do is we get a lot of the local churches to help us with our, our, our pregame meals and we have in the past. And, and in order to give back from that, because you just don't want to say, hey, give us pregame meal, give us pregame meal. What we do is on Tuesday night after practice, we have cookies and milk and we invite the youth pastors into the team room and they bring cookies and milk and we don't require the kids to go. But we say, hey, listen, you know, so and so from some blah, blah, blah church who's going to feed us Fridays here. They want to talk to y'all guys about some things. And if you want to go in and have cookies and milk and listen to them, you can. not and, and, and you'd be surprised how many kids kids go in there and listen. And, and, and generally the churches are really good about that. You know, they don't get overly um, religious with the kids, but they just talk to them about being good people and let them know that there's a place that they can go if they need help. And and, that, and plus you're getting kids, you know, they're getting fed. They're getting a little bit more food than some of these kids get. The other thing that we do is what we call touchdown club. And, and what we do is, is after Cookies and Milk, we'll set up some film and we'll invite parents who are members, parents or community members who join the Touchdown Club. And there's a little fee to this. It's another way to raise money. Um, we'll, we'll throw a little film on highlights from, from the previous week and talk about some of the big plays we had, some of the ups, some of the downs, um, who we're playing this week, how good they are, and, and, and you know what some of the struggles may or may not be. But what you're doing is you're building ownership. Um, you're saying, hey, listen, you guys are a part of the process. But what you're also doing is you're letting them know, hey, man, I'm doing the work. I'm not just showing up on Friday to say, yo, this is what we're doing. And we went and played Madden this week and got some plays. No, what we're doing is we're saying, hey, we're doing the work. Um, this is this is the team we play. This is what we think they're going to do, you know, and, and give them a 30 minute rundown of what's going on, similar to a coach's show. And you'd be surprised how far that can go with your stakeholders. Um, 
you know, your feeder coaches, very, very important. You know, your middle school coaches and those kind of things. Invite them to be a part of your game day staff. Let them help you with warming up and setting up the field. Let them be, sit them, we'll get one of them on the box if you need to, especially if you're at a small school and you got a small staff. Invite your middle school coaches over because you want them to have some carryover. You're really, really lucky if you get a middle school that says, hey, look, whatever you run, we're going to run. I was able to send my young coaches over to the middle school when I was at Red Springs and they would put our offense and defense in. And, uh, you know, they would go over. And, and so when those kids came to us, they, they knew what they knew what ace was and open was and, 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 and the terminology was the same. Um, and then what you also can do is talk to those middle school coaches. Hey, man, what do you need? Well, you know, coach, I, I don't have belts or I don't have this. Put it in your budget. You know, add another hundred and fifty dollars to your budget. Your AD isn't going to carry. You know, give them some helmet kits, you know, make them a little gift bag. Give them some helmet kits. Give them some budgets. I mean, some. Um, some belts, maybe a couple of practice jerseys, anything that you have that you're not using, pass it down to your, your coaches at your feeder school and you see what happens with that. And then you want to meet with the rising freshmen. Hey, this this is what we got going on. We're really excited to have you. Um, you know, I always I always do that, especially my second year at a, at a program. We'll, we'll put a highlight tape together and show up, put a little bit of music on there, try to get them right and say, hey, listen, this is the other thing you can do. One of the other things that we do with rising freshmen in, in particular is we used to have what we call like official visits. We would bring them over and let them eat, you know, three or four of them at a time and let them eat pregame meal with us and, and invite them down into the locker room while we're getting ready for a home game and let them be on the sidelines. Very similar to what the colleges do, but what we wanted them kids to do is understand this is this is how we do things and, and when we started doing that what we did see is we saw more freshmen showing up at the beginning of fall camp you know a lot of kids think you know around here middle school ball doesn't start until school starts and so you have a problem with that and, and so by doing it the way that we did it we were able to get more kids to understand hey this is what we want to be a part of and this is where we go and some of that is meeting with them and, and inviting them on for official visits and talking to them about academics and different things like that and you'd be surprised what taking 30 minutes away from your pregame talk and all that other stuff that you got going on the talk to these middle school kids can have for you as you build a program. Um, academics, you got to check eligibility. Talk to your ADs, talk to your uh, guidance counselors, find out where you are, who, who's had eligibility issues, who are in danger of eligibility issues. Um, are they, have there been previous issues in the past about eligibility? Um, one of the things that I've developed in, in working in my doctorate program is this online student athlete academic support program. Um, it's, a, it's a Google Classroom that's tied in with some Khan Academy stuff and, and the kids are able to get on their phones and get some tutoring. And, and also there's some self checks in there where they put their weekly status and submit it and the coaches are able to check it especially if you don't get your hands on them but you know do you have an academic support system is it going to be online is it going to be tutoring um, for your rising uh, you know your rising seniors have you checked their ACT SAT stuff look at their transcripts make sure they got their core classes in order especially if you're able to get there before second semester of the junior year make sure they have the the core classes that they have to have for the for the for the cutoff and then for your other kids and these kids in particular as well have they have they gone through the eligibility Center or the clearinghouse or whatever you're calling it these days. These are all things that you need to do in the first 30 days, guys. And this, this is a this is a lot, and I'm talking really fast, but this is the things that you have to understand that when you get that gig that you gotta do. And remember how I told you in the very first video, you're not gonna be ready because these are things you don't ever really think about until you get there. Um, your staff decisions. You've met with all the assistant coaches and stuff like that. Sit down with the principal and AD and say, hey, listen, um, I, I'd like to be able to keep this guy or not keep this guy. Is that a possibility? Um, let them know, you know, can I retain this guy? Can I not retain this guy? If I don't retain this guy for, for being a football coach, um, can I bring somebody else in to replace him? And the only thing I ever asked principals was this. If I bring you a certified teacher, just tell me you'll talk to him. Don't tell me you're going to hire him because you're lying to me because, you know, you, nobody should promise that I'll hire somebody. But but know that I vetted this person and I know that I'm going to be responsible for this person when I bring them in the building, because if they don't do right, I'm the one that brought them. But what you say is if I bring you somebody who's a certified person in the building, will you will you talk to him at least about a job? Because I'm the kind of guy I would like for most of my coaches to be in the building just because a lot of the kids that I deal with don't have consistent male role models. And I want them to be able to go to somebody and say, yo, coach, I'm having a problem. And, what can I do? And, you know, for me, it's just it's just a better thing. Now, I've had community coaches who have been great. And if you're a community coach, uh, I, you know, thank you for volunteering and, and doing the things that you do, because I'm pretty sure you don't make enough money for all the time that you put in, just like us who teach as well. Um, also, talk to the principal and AD about the inventory that you've looked at. Uh, identify your needs. I've been to identify your wants. You know, obviously, if, you, if, if the school was a more of a running team and now 
now you're going to the air raid. You know, you're going to want to look at some things for passing. You know, do you have enough stuff for routes on there? Do you want to get some, some you know, some traffic cones or, or trash cans or, or whatever it is you do to run your drills? You know, say, hey, this is what I need. Um, uniforms, you know, where, where are we at in the rotation on uniforms? Um, what kind of what kind of budget do we have as far as ordering things? What has been ordered? So, you know, if you get hired in, in February, then they've probably already done the reconditioning. You know, did you want to change the helmets? Is that a possibility? You know, if you're trying to change the culture, you know, what are you able to do? And this is that in that meeting. Um, once again, you know, hey, the, the biggest the two biggest parts of, of, of being a head football coach is making sure reconditioning is done and making sure huddle is paid for. You know, you got to make sure reconditioning is done. And look, I'm going to tell you right now, guys, do not skip money on reconditioning. If something happens to one of these youngins, God forbid, and, and that sticker is not up to date, you, you, you not only do you deserve what you get, but you're going to get it. So make sure you're getting that daggone reconditioning done. Um, you know, it, our, our game is under attack from a lot of different ways. And, and just make sure that you're getting stuff taken care of and, and, and doing the right things. And, and if you haven't got, you know, heads up certified and those kind of things, make sure you're doing those kind of things to, to make our game as safe as possible. But, you know, providing kids with safe uh, equipment is one of those things that, that as a head football coach, you have to understand that if something happens to that kid, the principal is going to be in the room, the athletic director is going to be in the room, and the head football coach is going to be in the room. And they're going to want to know why you did this, this and this and this. So, you know, make sure you're doing that. Do you have headsets? Um, and one of the things that that's always been told to me is, you know, hey, spend money where it affects winning. You know, don't don't spend money on something that's not going to really, you know, if it's nice, that's fine. But if you have a limited budget, you got to be able to go into the AD and the principal and say, hey, this is how this is going to help me be successful. And so that's really, really important as you're working through that. And then, you know, hey, this is my fundraising plan. You know, we're going to do a lift-a-thon. We're going to do, you know, this kind of raffle. We're going to, you know, the reverse raffle, the steak dinner, you know, the, the $100 steak dinner. You get two steak dinners and a, and a raffle ticket. And, uh, you know, you, we, after that, you win $10,000 or whatever it is with the limited number of tickets, you know, any, any of those kind of things you guys do. Hey, if you got some great fundraising ideas, share it with everybody who's watching the video, man, because everybody's trying to – to, to hustle money, you know, ain't nobody sitting on it, on, sitting on it like a billionaire owner or something like that. Um, strength and conditioning, you, you, you know, you need to find out who's running your strength program. You know, I was very fortunate when I went to Red Springs. We had a guy in there who had a PhD and he was one of the best strength coaches I've ever been around, Danny Bailey. He's down in South Carolina now. Um, but he was running that thing and we talked and I knew right away after talking to him, I didn't have to change a thing. Um, you know, I learned, I tried to learn a lot from him, but you know, who's running it, who's responsible for it. Um, you have some input about what you think is important. You know, I, I'm a, you know, I, I'm all about explosive lifts. I'm, I'm not a, I don't care if we just bench and things like that. And, you know, I want to do multi Olympic lifts, you know, power, hang clean, power clean, that kind of stuff I think is the most important, you know, that's just my philosophy, but I'll tell you, I'm not a strength and conditioning guru. I know just enough to get in trouble, but I also know how to pick up the phone and ask people questions. And I told you that in the very first video, if you don't know, ask, and if you don't ask, you're setting yourself up for failure. Um, you know, what's your, your what's the year round calendar for strength and conditioning? What are your phases? What are you going to do in a game week? Are you going to lift on game day? I mean, and that's one of those things where I, I think a lot of football coaches now are lifting on game day just to prove a point to the basketball coaches <laughs> you know it's it's crazy the basketball baseball coaches you know those kids in the weight oh, I, I got a game today coach i'm gonna lift well we lift in football huh well i mean yeah we lift in football so why can't you lift in basketball you know because if not you know basketball season your basketball guys who are in the weight training class they're gonna want to sit on the wall two days a week and then, you know that's never good so you have to have that uh you know that that discussion um, as far as, you know, the other things you got to worry about in this first 30 days, what are your staff development ideas? What are your clinic schedules? Are you going to go to Air Raid Intensive? Are you going to Air Raid Nation? Are you going to go to the, to the University of uh, Alabama Coaches Clinic? Uh, you know, you know, are you going to are you going to do a staff visit? I, I much prefer going up and say, hey, coach, can I come up on Tuesday, and, you know, get a get a reason for from the school and take the guys up and and have my coaches sit in with the position coaches during spring ball and, and listen to a meeting and see how the meetings are run. And, you know, they usually will give you all the film you want is you know some people might not let you take it out of the building but they let you sit down and look at drills and things like that and talk to them and uh so would you rather do a staff visit or organized clinic especially you know we're, we have a we have a very good uh uh situation where i'm at because you know i'm i'm an hour from duke carolina nc state you know two hours from university of charlotte hour and a half from university of south carolina you know about three hours from clemson so you know we can get in the car and go to all these different places and do different things um a staff retreat you know and if you don't have the money to go to the beach or the mountains or something like that do it at school have a saturday at school and you get eyes get out there and you, and you bring food in and you eat and you bond a little bit and um 
one of the things I learned when I went to the college level is we had a clinic each other. Every assistant coach had to get up and teach his position to the entire staff. And I think that's really important. You get buy-in. You see everybody everybody knows what they're doing. And, and then it also exposes people who really don't want to work hard. And, and so, you know, that that changes the the level of, of responsibility and level of work that you're going to get out of guys. If you look at that staff and say, hey, look, on so-and-so date, you're going to have to uh, the clinic everybody and teach us. This is my stance. This is how I take the first step, you know, if you're the defensive line coach or receiver coach or whatever it is. So, you know, that, that staff clinic, um, it gets everybody on the same page. And, and, and you know, don't, don't scrimp on that. You know, feed these guys. Make sure they have everything they want to do. Try to get as much swag for your boys as you can. I promise you that a hoodie goes a long way um, towards that kind of stuff, and that goes back to your stakeholders. Uh, I'm a firm believer that on Friday night you need to know who the coaches are. I, I want all my coaches to look the same. I want, you know, I want them all to be dressed professionally, you know, those kind of things. And, and, you know, because this is a profession, this isn't a hobby. You know, if you want, if you want a t-shirt that says coach on the back, go coach Little League. You know, this, this is, this is what we've chosen to do. This isn't a hobby for us. So if you're going to do it, be a professional about it. So get everybody on the same page, do those things. And, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to ruffle feathers. This is just how I feel about it. Um, you know, comment down below if you think it, it, that's not important. Um, and then, you know, develop your spring and summer calendar. Hey, hey, guys, this is what our summer practice is going to look like. Does anybody have any issues with that? Get it, get ahead of the game. If you know so-and-so has a timeshare and they're not going to be here that week and they're defensive coaches, then don't have defensive practice that week. You know, or, you know, the way I look at it is if the colleges can go through spring ball 15 practices, you don't need more than 15 practices in the summer. And, and you know, that's just my firm. That's my form. Uh, my you know opinion that i formed and um but you know that doesn't mean it's right wrong or indifferent it's just the way that i do it so you know sit down with the spring practice schedule summer calendar talk to your coaches and see what's going on with that and then the last thing you want to do is you want to start talking about qb school um you want to try to get the middle school guys in there especially if they're running the same thing you're doing but you want to talk about the ba the basic the basic offense this is these are the plays we're going to run um introduce them to this idea of box ida and if you don't know what box ida is uh, you want to check out the total air raid system there's a whole there's a whole idea about you know this it's a pre-snap read you know it's it's the box that you know the inside of the you know inside of the box the depth of the alignment the eyes the alignment the secondary things like that but there's a great video on that in the in the total area system for you to check out um you develop leadership talk to them about what their what their job is as the quarterback they're they're the face of the program you know and, and what your expectations are you know you expect them to be out front of everything you know i don't care if you're a freshman quarterback you're out front of everything you're the guy and um you need to make that thing. So I'm sure there's some things I missed. If, if there is, comment down below. Like I said, man, it's the first 30 days. These are things that if you've never been a head coach, you probably hadn't thought about. I'm sure I missed some things. You know, I try to make a list of stuff. And you, there's guys who are really, really successful who don't do some of these things. There's some guys who are who aren't successful who who do other stuff. So you know, check it out. Um, but if I miss something, put it put it down in the uh, in the comments. Let me know what you think is the most important thing is because this is about growing coaches, growing each other. Every situation is different. You know, some situations you don't have to worry about meeting with the stakeholders you walk in there and the booster club drops you a thirty thousand dollar check and you just keep it moving you don't have to do those kind of things other things is you could you could meet with the booster club and raise 200 bucks and think you had a great night so you know do all the things but the one thing i will tell you is this be yourself the best piece of advice I ever got was if you're going to get fired, get fired doing what you want to do. Don't let somebody talk you into doing something that you don't believe in. And then when you get fired, you're like, man, why did I do that? Why didn't I do this? Because there's only two types of coaches in this world, guys, those who have been fired and those who are going to be. I really appreciate you guys doing that. Make sure you make sure you're communicating all your all your wants and needs with your staff. Um, lean on your network. You know, talk to guys who have been there. There's nothing like guy, another guy who's been a head coach. If you got a guy on your staff who's been a head coach, pull him in the office shut the door and don't be afraid to look at him and say, man, if you were in charge, what would you do? Because if your ego gets in the way, it's going to lead you to failure. I appreciate you guys looking. I, I know this was a long video, but I hope it's really, really informative. And I think if you if you pay attention to these things and you really build your program around some of this stuff, you'll be able in the long run to spin it to win. Fight 72. Fight 72. Hut. 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 Hut.